Since Redshift is one of the most popular renderers in the production and 3D market today, I thought we could take a look at how dual GPUs can increase your render performance. Hey everyone, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Review. And on our channel, we like to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirement. Today's technical requirement is, we're gonna take a look at Redshift in 3D Max, Maya, and Cinema 4D, and see how dual GPUs, so we got two RTX 3070s, two RTX 3080s, and two RTX 3090s, to see how these GPUs perform and how they can increase your productivity. So before we go any further, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications so you can be notified when I do release new videos, Visit the Discord chat server. There's a link in the comment section below. And this will help build a community or a place where people can go and ask questions when they're trying to increase the productivity in their studio. Please leave a comment in the section below. I do respond to every comment on my channel. So since Redshift is so popular in the 3D production market, I thought we could take a look at how dual GPUs can perform in programs like 3D Max, Maya, and Cinema 4D. So we'll be using some of the tools that Redshift supplies itself for benchmarking, as well as I've downloaded some scenes off the internet so we could look at something that's a little closer to production work. So we can see which GPU is going to fit your budget versus performance for your studio and your artist workflow. So when you're setting up two GPUs in your system, basically all you need to do is install both GPUs into your workstation, something with enough PCIe lanes to feed 16x to both GPUs. And then let the software itself use both GPUs as single devices for rendering out. So it doesn't combine the VRAM into one large pool, but it treats each GPU as a single device. You can also use a hardware monitor to ensure that you're using full utilization across both GPUs. So we're gonna take a look at some of the Redshift rendering in both 3D Max, Cinema 4D, and Maya. So I've downloaded some scenes off the internet so that we could test out this renderer and see how it performs with single and dual GPUs. So here we have the radio scene that you can download from the Redshift website. If you come over to the system tab, you will come down here under global preferences and you notice that it has recognized both of the RTX 3090s. And for those that want to try out the RT rendering for the optics, you can look under the experimental option and there's a checkbox right here to enable optics RTX on for supported GPUs. So we'll just render the scene out and see how long it takes. So you can see it's rendering very quickly and, and you can see that it's rendering two tiles at the time because of the two CPUs. And if you come over to the hardware monitor, you can see that it's using about 93% on the one GPU and about 87% of the memory for that GPU. And if you come over to the other GPU, it's using 100%, about 90% of the 24 gigabytes that's on the RTX 3090. And that rendered that image out pretty quickly, it rendered in about one minute and six seconds. As Redshift is supported in multiple packages, I thought we could take a look at Cinema 4D and see how the renderer works in that software. So here we have a bathroom scene that I've downloaded from the internet for Cinema 4D. And again, there's links to all the scenes that I've used in the comments section below. And I wanted to show you the Redshift rendering in Cinema 4D as well as some of the other packages. So if we come into the Redshift and we go into Preferences, you'll notice under the Redshift here that it does recognize, again, both RTX 3090, so we know we're rendering across both GPUs. And if we come up to Render and we just go Render to Viewport, we can see how long it's gonna to take to render out this image. So this one's more of a photorealistic renderer compared to the other one that was more of an animation style renderer. And that rendered that image out in about 41 seconds. And as you can see, it's a pretty clean render. There is some noise, especially in the darker areas here, but it's still rendering out that image quite clearly. So the last package we'll take a look at for Redshift today is Maya. And I've downloaded a scene off the internet that's a little more production worthy or something that's gonna stress out the hardware and it takes a lot longer to render. But it gives us a more accurate you know, depiction of how long it's gonna to take to render your scenes or a complex scene using Maya and Redshift. So this is the attic scene that I downloaded from the internet. It's something that's gonna simulate more of a production rendering environment. I did make some changes to this so it'll render a little quicker. So for anybody that wants to download this scene off the internet and see how long it takes on their system, here's the changes that I made. So under the render settings, if you go under the output, I did set the passes to 265. And under the GI, I did set the amount of rays to 2048. And let's just render that scene out and see how long it takes. So this one takes a lot longer than the other ones that we were looking at today. But once the render it starts itself, we can then come into the hardware monitor and take a look to see how much utilization we're getting out of each GPU. So on the first GPU, we're getting about 87% of the 24 gigs on the RTX 3090. On the second CPU, we're getting 100% utilization and about 90% of the memory used. And again, there's links to all the scenes that I've used in the comment section below. So here you can see the render is complete and it rendered in about five minutes and 21 seconds. So it's pretty quick. You know, there's no denoising filter on this, so there's still a lot of noise in that image. 
So it's not a bad test if you're just looking for something that's a little more production worthy for your rendering pipeline. Let's take a look at the benchmark charts for the three GPUs. So we use an RTX 3070, an RTX 3080, and an RTX 3090, as well as dual GPUs for each category. So under the Redshift benchmark, you can see that we cut our benchmark times in about half just by adding two GPUs. But the steps between the GPU categories is about 30% improvement for each GPU. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like to use just the benchmark tools to see what the performance of a GPU is like. Because when we come over to the radio renderer, you can see that we're not getting twice the render performance once we're adding the second GPU. We're getting about a 90% improvement. And the difference between an RTX 3070 and an RTX 3080 is only about 30%. But when we go down to an RTX 3090, we're only getting about a 10% improvement. But when we take a look at something like the attic scene that's much more complex to render, you can see that one RTX 3070 took 16 minutes, or two RTX 3090s took five minutes. So if you're looking for a GPU for your production or your studio, or you're an independent artist, you really do need to do some tests to understand the complexity of the scenes that you're gonna be rendering, as well as your workflow. This is really the only true performance measurement for any of these GPUs. So as you can see with our render test today, you can see the Redshift can be a very effective renderer for your production. Now it depends on, again, what kind of GPU you're using and how much VRAM is required for your scenes, whether they're simple or complex. So if you have very complex scenes, you're gonna need a lot of VRAM if you're doing less complex scenes and you just need more speed, you might want to look at two RTX 3070s. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. But before I go, I would like to again call out to any artists that want to supply, you know, a V-Ray scene, either in Max, Cinema 4D, or Maya, that I could use in the channel for benchmarking. So something that's a little more production worthy or can simulate a production scenario. This way I have a scene that I can stress out the hardware and push it to its maximum to be able to get good benchmarking numbers. I will help support any artist and promote their work on my channel, and I will give credit to anybody that supplies a scene to my channel. There's also a link to all the scenes that I used in today's demo in the comment section. So if you'd like to try these out yourself, go ahead and post the times that you got for your rendering. So before we go today, I'd like to ask you one question. What GPU do you use for rendering Redshift? You can put your notes in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications so you can be notified when I do release new videos, and visit the Discord chat server. There's a link in the comment section below. There's also a link to all of the scenes that I used in today's demo. So if you'd like to download those and try them out yourself, maybe you could post what your benchmark was in the comment section. I enjoyed doing this video for you, and I'll see you in the next one.